The Guthrie's way is as simple as one, two, three. Fresh, hot, and fast. Fresh is better than frozen. Hot is our goal of serving always hot food. And fast, our concept allows us to be one of the fastest in the industry. Guthrie's Famous Chicken, open in Roanoke seven days a week. The drive through from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. And our lobby from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. each day. Guthrie's, 3240 Highway 431 in Roanoke. A proud supporter of all of our local teams. All right, folks, welcome in to the 5-6 football hour here at Guthrie's in Roanoke, Highway 431 and 22. Uh, Tim Altork, Kyle Richardson in the house. Uh, maybe Richard or Braxton uh, going to be able to uh, make it down. They were talking to Coach P, uh, interviewing him uh, tonight uh, for the uh, Randolph County St. James game uh, tomorrow night. But uh, we got a lot of things here uh, to talk about tonight. Three exciting football games last Last week uh, that uh, we were able to witness, I saw two, you saw two, uh, and Kyle watched about 15. I watched the one. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle stayed home. Kyle stayed home. He got to play. The, they what they played, you know, they moved their game to Thursday night. And uh, so Kyle got to stay home on Friday night, and uh, he was watching uh, about 10 or 15 games uh, on NFHS, and uh, he was feeding us scores and keeping everybody informed. But uh, I was at the command center. Yeah, you, right. you were at the command center center so uh kyle was uh keeping us up to date but uh of course uh, all three teams uh, that made the playoffs in our in our area that our coverage area uh randolph county wadley and hanley all in advance all advancing to uh the second round of the alabama high school uh football playoffs uh and all three games uh, will be tomorrow night two of our teams will travel uh two going kind of south uh not too far apart uh, hanley goes to tuskegee to take on booker t washington uh Randolph County will go to Montgomery to take on St. James, and uh, Wadley will uh, hold down the county tomorrow night uh, and uh, take on South Lamar. The Stallions will come calling uh, second or third time. that Third time we've ever played them. Yep. We're 2-0 and against them all time, and I've been blessed enough to be able to go to both of those games. We played them in 2004 in the third round of the playoffs, 21-20 to victory in Millport, which is right – at the Mississippi State line, it is a long drive. And then we played them again in the Quay Drake breakout game in 2015. That was the second round before we played Cedar Bluff in the third round. So we're kind of swapping them. Going up. in reverse. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and uh, we kind of talked about that uh, Thursday night over at Wadley. Uh, as I interviewed, uh, Quay Drake was uh, was there. And uh, hey, you got to send me that picture, by the way. I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I got I, it. I, yeah. I need to send it to you. You're right. I haven't I haven't had it. I did see, see it on the video. But uh, uh, Quay's just an outstanding young man uh, and always uh, loved to talk to to him and, and see him. He always has that big smile on his face. Uh, he represents Randolph County and Wadley High School uh, very well. well. Yeah, we'll get more to Jacksonville State when we get to the NCAA <laughs> portion because I'll, I'll let that go then. Well, but yeah, uh, oh, see, it, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know where he's going. Yeah, wow. and yeah, but seeing Quay, you know, he's he's a grown. I mean, it always happens. You know, you see a kid in high school and they they grow up, they get bigger, they get stronger, especially if they keep playing football. But, man, he looks like a grown man, doesn't he? Uh, yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> but he's always got that smile on his face. And, yeah. that, and that's what that's what impresses me. And, he's you know, he's a yes, sir, no, sir kind of person and uh, just uh, brought up well. And, uh, you know, kudos to his parents and uh, and everything that he's accomplished. He, he's played college ball now. This is uh, the conclusion, uh, I think, of his sixth year. He's Finally gonna, running out of yeah, eligibility, yeah. Going to graduate. Team uh, captain of Jack State. Yes, that's yep. exactly right. So, uh, anyway, uh, we got a big show tonight, and we are going to talk some college football. Uh, and uh, you and I might get in a wrestling match. Uh, pre, it's on. <laughs> it's on. It's on. That's Dogs versus Tide. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yep. We, we're going to we're going to uh, see if we can't uh, procure a, a trip, and we'll talk about that uh, <laughs> when we when we get into the college football season. But uh, uh, we're going to kind of go back and uh, recap uh, the games. Uh, from last Friday night on the show, uh, and also we will uh, show you the brackets, and we'll preview tomorrow night's games, and then we'll jump into a little college football. There are not many ga good games in. Yeah, it's in, cupcake week in yeah, the in the SEC and the ACC, sure. so yeah. it's there's a couple of 
conference games, but everybody's getting ready for rivalry week next week. So, yeah, not a whole lot of games, but there's some. Yeah, there's some, there's some big games more on the national scene yeah. than uh, than anything. But uh, it it doesn't matter. It, it's all about the SEC for me. Which with Georgia playing Georgia Tech next week, they pretty much got two cupcake weeks back to back. Man, Tennessee folks better be, uh, hope they're not listening. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they'll get they'll get over it. But uh, uh, we are live at uh, Guthrie's here. Uh, we're out on the patio. I called Tim and or texted Tim and asked him. I said, "You up for uh, sitting outside?" I'd already talked to you about it. Kyle mm-hmm. said, "We'll be good. We'll be good." And uh, yeah. d- d- but Tim comes in his shorts. Yeah, I was at the office. It was warmer today with the with the sunshine out, but. Didn't have time to go home and change, so here I am. Ah, oh, well, you toughen could, it out. You, you, you grow on that thick skin for tomorrow night. That's what it, you know. Yeah, gotta we got to get, get get ready for. Uh, we're going to be out in the cold we, again we, tomorrow. We'll be out in the cold tomorrow night. But uh, and, and kudos and shout out to Doctor Don because uh, it w- it was kind of looking uh, iffy. Uh, for the weather forecast tomorrow night, but uh, maybe a little preview. Only about a 20% chance uh, in Tuskegee, Montgomery area, kind of south of uh, uh, Auburn. And uh, Kyle and Wadley, theirs is a little bit higher, but that front's coming through. But I think we're going to escape the rain tomorrow night. I hope so. And it's only going to be about 58 degrees, so it's not going to be – not going to be bad. It's been a lot worse, yeah, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I have been There have been, been some in, cold nights in the playoffs. I have been in a lot, lot worse. Uh, and also tonight on the show, uh, as we go through the teams, i got a couple of video clips that uh, we'll talk about uh, while we show them. Uh, those of you that uh, listening on the audio side only, uh, flip over and uh, watch on the video side so you can uh, see the highlights. But we'll talk about those as, as they go so you won't miss anything. But, um, all right, we're going to take a break real quick, and uh, we'll come back. Back, uh, we'll uh, we'll jump into uh, Wadley and Cedar Bluff from last week. In today's economy, small businesses and consumers thrive in strong relationships. That's where First Bank of Alabama fits into your financial solution. Our products and services give you the tools you need for your financial success. We're a click away if you're looking for the online relationship. Just visit us at www.fbal.bank. Or, if you prefer in person, come visit one of our 12 locations throughout Calhoun, Clay, Cleburne, Randolph, Chilton, and Talladega counties. We look forward to seeing you however you prefer to bank. First Bank of Alabama, where you are first. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. For all of your farmer football, family, friends, and food, WM Grocery is ready for all of your get-togethers. Tailgating, a trip to the lake, or just firing up the grill, WM Grocery has you covered with the finest fresh-cut meats daily. If you haven't already, be sure to download the WM Grocery app for all of our daily specials. That's available in the App Store and Google Play. Check us out on Facebook, WM Grocery in Weedowie, Heflin, Piedmont, and Roanoke. Striving to keep our excited, hungry customers happy? That's the ultimate goal of Guthrie's Famous Chicken. Over a half a century in business, still keeping it simple, fresh, hot, and fast. The Guthrie's concept allows us to be one of the fastest in the business. Guthrie's in Roanoke open seven days a week. The drive through from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. and the lobby closes at 9 p.m. Guthrie's of Roanoke, 3240 Highway 431. All right, we're back uh, here at uh, Guthrie's. Come on out and uh, grab you uh, some supper uh, tonight and uh, sit and watch the show. You can uh, come out here on the patio and uh, enjoy it. It's pretty nice out here right now. Uh, you may be a little chilly with the shorts on, but it, it's pretty nice to me. I'm freezing. You're freezing? <laughs> I'll power through hey, it though. Well, it's not gonna. You, it's not gonna affect my performance. I, I'm. I'm. I'm game tested and ready to go. Well, your better half came through and got supper. Yeah, I got food waiting at the house. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's. Is it? Is boyfriend night? Yes, yeah, boyfriend. <laughs> boyfriend. <laughs> That's what we call it. it you know, my daughters. Is, That's what, they, yeah, they got the boyfriends now. And Thursday night, one of them lives in Auburn, and so he can't. Oh, wow. They can't get together. You know, they can't oh, okay. see each other every day. So Thursday nights, he comes and eats Guthrie's with us, and it's become his uh, Thursday night tradition. It's, it's boyfriend night. Hey, I love it. You could have got her to bring you some pants, though. Yeah, I guess if I was thinking, but I – You weren't thinking. I, I'm locked right. in on football, man. I'm not worried about anything else. Laser focused. Went straight from work to football. That's right. It's locked hey, in. There, there, look, I've been I've been laser focused on football <laughs> since Sunday. I have done more prep work, uh, and uh, and I'm going to tell everybody, I've got some uh, clips, some highlight videos, actually, that I'm going to put up tomorrow morning uh, on, uh, on our Facebook page uh, from all three of the games. 
that were played Friday night, and uh, they they got lots of highlights in them. I'm, and I'm going to show you just a couple of clips out of that uh, tonight from from all three schools. But uh, there 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 were lots of highlights last Friday night. Lots of them. lots of them. All right, so let's jump into uh, the Wadley Bulldogs. Uh, they hosted Cedar Bluff last Thursday night over on the West Bank. Uh, and they made very quick work of the Tigers en route to a 62-10 uh, round one Class 1A victory. Jaquez Wilkes, two long touchdown runs in the opening quarter to pace the dogs. And I think Jaquez had two carries, 140 yards, and two touchdowns on his no, first Three two- carries. Three, three carries. carries. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he had a little short one in there. And then he went 70, he went two, and then he went 68. Yep. <laughs> 140 and three carries, two touchdowns. Uh, yeah. He's a man among boys. Yes. He's just a sophomore. Yes. So the win for Wadley sets up uh, the second round match against the uh, Stallions of South Lamar at Curtis Lynch Memorial Field uh, tomorrow night. Now, let's go back and talk a little bit uh, about that game. And actually, uh, i tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll we'll talk about it while we watch. Yeah, we'll talk about it while we watch. Here is that's that's right the first one of the game right there. Yeah. First one of the game. And is the score was take not this one to the house. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, touchdown. We'll have it oh, it's no flags two on the play. <laughs> and the dogs on yeah, the board first. That was a familiar sight, and it would have been a lot more familiar if the game was close. But, I mean, the numbers from that Wadley game are just ridiculous. The way that they did whatever they wanted offensively. They go – the the number of offensive plays was 22. They had 22 offensive plays. Eight out of those 22 were touchdowns. Yep. I mean, that's it, – it, 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 t- it was eight possessions too, is it? That it was right? eight, yeah. eight possessions. They scored nine eight total eight. touchdowns because they got the pick six, which you have a, you the highlight of as well But yep. uh, here in a minute. But, but yeah, they had the one defensive touchdown and they had eight total touchdowns on offense and, and eight possessions. 22 offensive plays and, and knocked it out of the park with that. So, yeah. Um, There's my professional photographer in the house. Oh, okay. Uh, or vide- videographer. Videographer. I almost and had a, a touchdown on a punt return the other night. Yeah, all, he that, he was one block away one man. Uh, from uh, from uh, getting there. Tim, it's and everybody excuse me for just a second. I'm going to give – <laughs> Take care of business on the air. Uh, it, my truck is right there, the gray one, and it is uh, – Hanging on the visor on a lanyard. Okay. There's two of them there. On your side? Driver's side? Driver's side. Oh, they're on the mirror. On the, hanging on the mirror. Okay. Oh, I, I can do it from here. Yeah, that way it won't hold you up. But mine's there too. <laughs> hey, this is the beauty of live uh, That's right. of, of a live oh, production. Sure. Uh, but uh, I was giving Tim Sims, uh, who will be our cameraman tomorrow night uh, at uh, Tuskegee at Booker T. Washington, uh, his uh, his media credential, so that he, have he can get in. He's not not going to be able to go with us. Uh, so uh, anyway, and we appreciate Tim. All right, now you talked about the uh, the pick six, and uh, we got uh, a, a pretty neat version or or view of it. Football, family, friends, and nope. food. Well, WM Grocery <laughs> is ready for all of this. You yeah. grabbed the wrong mouse. There you go. And this was a great job by snappy. Hunter Job's Baldwin back. here getting Going this with the sideline. Intercepted. Just a five-yard out Hello, route. Hello, goodbye. Cortavian Lynch picked pick six. Jumped the route. He jumped took it all the way to the house. The slant route yeah, took him to the house That was one of two touchdowns for him. He had a rushing touchdown also in that game. And yeah, Wadley just scored. Y'all mentioned the almost almost had the punt return, but they scored in a lot of different ways. And you know, uh, talking about the efficient offense too. The, and we'll see the next the next clip. The pass from from Brent Langley. He threw four balls and completed all four. I mean, everything was working. Now dropping back to pass. And you see Brent how wide open the top for Frisco. Frisco Got gets it. there. I mean, that's Touchdown. as easy as, as it comes. And that's really just indicative of how that whole night went. Just everything wanted, Wadley wanted, they got. And Brent really could not have went out there and handed it off better than right. he was throwing it to those guys the other night. And he was hitting throws on go routes. He was hitting throws across the middle, and he was just being very efficient. Yep. Oh, Tim. Tim drove from uh, Opelika, and he's got to go back to Penton. Not me, Tim. The other well, Tim. Yeah, that Tim. That yeah. We can't. Well, he's not on camera, but he he'll, he'll be behind the camera, we need that camera to tomorrow night. <laughs> 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 By the way, Jerry Huddleston said we look good on uh, on, on the screen. Well, coming right. from Jerry, I'll take that. That's just yeah. right. He we said, saw him Thursday night. He was yeah. He, he showed up at the Wildly game Thursday th- night. There, there were so many high school sports guys there reunion. that it was like a reunion. 
Yeah. Thursday night. Yeah. TA was there. Both TAs were Both there. Both TAs were there. The Dukas's. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jerry Huddleston. Yeah. yeah. Had a good time. I mean, everybody was there. But, oh, uh, wow. Uh, and Kyle's watching. Kyle's got him a game on over there. Well, I, fl- I flipped on that Chambers Academy State Championship game, and they're up forty-one to fourteen with five minutes left in the game. It was they were up by okay. a touchdown at halftime. I was just checking the score, but it looks like they're going to win state championship in three A. And a little bit of a connection there here. Yes, from here, Kareen Henry, former Hanley Tiger, on that Chambers Academy team. Exactly scored a touchdown earlier. I saw. And Tim, there you go. Tim got another Tim played connection Tim. right yep. here. Yep, he go. played. He played Chambers. He was about that close to being uh, Hanley Tiger at one time. I ride by there a lot when I go to yeah. Auburn. Yeah, that's well, about as close as that's I get. As close as I get. <laughs> <laughs> you get to ride by there again tomorrow too. That's right. All that's right, but uh, getting back to the Wada game, uh, it's my first opportunity to see them. Tim, I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. Uh, my first opportunity to see him play. I was going to get to go a couple of weeks ago, but uh, had a scheduling conflict uh, and uh, changed changed uh, balls that we play with. We went from a football to a basketball real quick yep. on that Friday night, and I didn't get the chance to watch uh, Wadley play, but I got to see him play. Uh, just it, re- really impressive football team. Kyle made the comment uh, during uh, the broadcast the other night that this team is more balanced, more well-rounded, than the team that went twenty one in twenty one that went yeah, to the state championship, uh, and and I do not disagree with that statement. Nothing against nothing against that team. It's just this this team right here. You know, all these guys and most of them are tenth graders. They've been playing on the field since eighth graders. Yeah, and even some of the juniors like Ty Taylor and some of those guys. Two A. Same same thing. I mean, they've been playing. Ty Taylor's been playing since the eighth grade, and he's a junior. I mean, so a lot of these guys, even though they're tenth, eleventh grade, it's like they're seniors in terms of the experience that they have and how much they've been playing varsity football. And Cannon Parrott came back. He didn't play last year as a junior. Came back and he played this year as a senior. He's done a great job. Like we mentioned about our linebackers all the time, we have a senior, junior, sophomore, and a freshman playing at linebacker, and all four of them do a great job. As Trey Heath, the ninth grader, actually scored a touchdown the other night. Yeah, that's right. And it's comparing the two teams, I, I, that's an interesting little rabbit to chase too because you think about what that team had. I was actually reading about that team in 21 today, I just as chance would have it. You know, Jamal Buchanan and uh, Marable. Uh, which Marable was it? Jacob. Jacob Marable. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Hey, trust me. I know. I know. But, uh, but Jacob, they both ran for over 1,400 yards. It was pick your poison with those two guys, and, and offensively it wasn't as much of a passing game with that team. It was handed off to those two guys and let them work their magic. And but Tim when, Marable, the fullback, the block for him. That's right. And when Jamal got hurt, in the in the state championship game, that really kind of deflated everything, you know, because he ran the opening kickback in that in that in that game, and while he was humming, he gets hurt, and it just changed the whole dynamic of that football game, and it and I think that this Wadley team is less susceptible to that kind of injury. Obviously, you don't want to see Jaquez Wilkes go down or or somebody like that, but 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 if you lose, uh, you know, somebody that's one of those front line guys. This team may be more equipped to handle that kind of yeah, loss. We have more depth, for yeah. sure. And it's funny you mentioned that because Coach Motley and I actually talked about that last Friday. He said losing Jamal in that state championship game, it kind of took the wind out of our sails, not as much offensively right. but defensively right. because he was a lockdown corner right. and did a great job in run defense, and we needed him to try and stop those big running backs from Sweetwater. But it that's just the hand that you get dealt. And that's that's what we had to deal with that year. But this year, we got a lot more depth than we've had, I think, in Coach Motley's whole career. A lot of guys that have been playing since they were younger, and we've been kind of waiting on them to get older and more experienced, and they've become leaders on and off the field. And people like Brent Langley have stepped up on and off the field and done a great job. That There was a story about Brent after we lost to Weedowie. Jaquez Wilkes, because he's the biggest guy on the field, they would go in Oklahoma drills or one-on-ones, and he would call that Brent every time because he would want to hit Brent. But Brent would never go up against him. So Ty Taylor would always have to take the brunt of the brunt of the force as the fullback. Of course, he gets the dirty work. But after that loss to Randolph County, Brent decided he wanted to uh, step up and step in and go one-on-one with Jaquez. And he actually he didn't win, but he did pretty good. 
That's impressive. Yeah, that's hey, that tells you something but, about a kid and where his mindset is at. Hey, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to get hit by Jaquez Wilts yeah, either. That's no, that's I a mean, business no. decision right there. But hey, when you're playing for the stakes that Wadley could be playing for, and your quarterback is in there saying, "Hey, bring it on," you know, let's all get a little bit tougher. That's that's a pretty special statement right there. I, I like that. That's just the kind of team that they've got this year in Wadley. And Coach Wadley's done a great job coaching these guys with Jeremiah Thomas at coach and. Uh, Coach Boyd, Coach yep. Taylor, Coach uh, Burns, Coach Burns on the defensive side, calling defensive plays, and just doing a great job this year. And that's something that Coach Motley, I, I think that the the going back to Jamal Buchanan and the injury in the state championship game, I, that I don't I want I don't want to say emotional scar, but that's a that was a huge learning experience for for Coach Motley because he'll tell you now he was not prepared for that. He didn't have somebody ready to step into that position to come off the bench and, and fill the role that Buchanan played on that team, he's not going to make that mistake again. And I, he, cause he's mentioned that not directly, but enough where you kind of know where it, what he's talking about. Yeah. He's mentioned to me, Hey, we got to have some of these younger guys ready. We've got to have, you never know what's going to happen in the playoffs. And it, it just feels like he's hearkening back to that moment where he got caught a little unprepared and he's admitted that. So, uh, you know, coaches learn. And I think that this Wadley team will benefit from that. And that's where a guy like Trey Heath steps in at that running back spot or Blaine Murphy, a senior, that plays a little bit of defensive end, a little bit outside linebacker. He can run the ball yeah. if needed. Yeah. We've got pieces that we can plug and play at pretty much anywhere we want, and they'll do a great job. They know what to do in that role, and they can get the job done. It's a start of a, a potentially very exciting playoff it, run it, here for it, Wadley. It's, it, it's going to be it, – I think it's it, – I think it sets up to be very special. Yeah, I think Wadley is. Uh, everybody knows that, that, that they're a dangerous team. They're they're no secret. No, the, you know it's no secret throughout the state. But uh, Wadley can beat you in a lot of different ways. They haven't had to throw the football a whole lot. You know, well, uh, we can. But uh, you know they they definitely can. I, and we saw that a couple of passes uh, uh, Friday night. But uh, he did he did not have to. To throw the football, Wadley, Wadley is very dangerous, and, and and their defense is 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 very good, as well. And as you mentioned, when y'all when Hanley played Cusa Christian before the season even started, their head coach was asking about Wadley because they exactly. already knew. Yeah, right. He asked me that he asked me that week when we were talking about us broadcasting up there. You know, where uh, tell me tell me about Wadley. You know, what is and all I can say is coach they're good just know we're coming they're 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 good and and that's a potential matchup in the sem, in the semifinals, the semifinals. but uh before, oh, wait, get, before before we go to the break you jump out to go to the bracket right yeah okay yeah hang on before you do that I, there's one more kid I wanted to mention and and it's Murr. oh yeah <laughs> caught, Murr. caught the touchdown and I know he's had opportunities <laughs> he came up short he dropped one yep. I those are the two that I saw and can remember from this season where he's been that close to scoring a touchdown. Finally, finally got his six points on Friday night. Bailey had to give him some love, though. Yes. We we love Logan Murray. There's, <laughs> there's, there's no secret about that. Bailey kind of mentioned that on the broadcast, but I'll reiterate what he said. You know, it's so much fun to be able to be broadcasting. This is actually my 10th year doing play-by-play. I graduated 2013 and started broadcasting play-by-play for Widely that year. So this is my 10th year doing this, and it's so fun being able to watch all these ball games and get to experience all these crazy games that we get to witness. But the bigger thing is the relationship that you build with these kids because you talk to these kids week in and week out. And you build kind of a bond with those kids, and you that kind of sticks with them and sticks with you as you both get older. You remember watching them play and supporting them along the way, and it's a beautiful thing to see. It, it makes it special. I, I, I really. And when a kid like that, that he's he's played all year, he's been a big part of the team. He's not one of the the headline guys, but he's a, a big part of this Wadley team. And when he gets a moment of glory like that, it's always fun to see. He's he's a hardworking guy, and Hunter had to. Ch- Try to flag Bailey down in the uh, press box because Logan was Logan was trying <laughs> Logan was trying to wave him down. Yeah, <laughs> from the sideline and, and his uncle too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, his dad. Yeah. That's great. They got or his dad. Okay, yeah, yeah. they finally got his attention, and then after the game, he came up to the press box and talked with us for a little bit. Him and his girlfriend came up there, and he was bragging about his touchdown. He said, "Yeah, you finally got your two left feet in the end zone. <laughs> Took you long enough." That's I told great. him if he'd ever catch a if he'd ever catch a touchdown pass, he might get a ball, but. 
just one game short. He was a game late. He That's was a right. Game late. He waited till the <laughs> till we were done with that. <laughs> game late. <laughs> All right, so Wadley hosts South Lamar, the Stallions, uh, tomorrow night. They are the number two seed out of Region 5 behind Lynn as we put the brackets up on the screen. Uh, they entered the contest 8-3 and three overall record, losing only to Lynn in region play. They knocked off Perennial Powers, Pickens County, 21-20. to Their other loss came to uh, L- uh, Lamar and Sulligan, and uh, both of those teams are, are 2A schools. Uh and I'm just going to let uh, let you guys kind of take it and run. We, I, I know where it's going. Wadley set up to play at Pickens County next week. Or, uh, or Lynn. No, or we get to play at home against Winterboro. Uh, oh, oh, okay. That's right. That's right. Because their region opponent, our four seed, I came in here last week and I was telling you, Coach Motley and I talked about it. He said, look, Winterboro's got a shot at beating Decatur Heritage, the one seed from that Addison region. And lo and behold, they went up there and did it. And that's you know that's partially because of the Coosa Christian situation. Exactly. That that the standings in that region were a little wonky because of the, the forfeits by Coosa Christian. So the the number one team that Winterboro played was not technically or not actually it on the been. field based on on the field results would not have been the number one team so right. that that played to Winterboro's advantage but you're right Kyle mentioned it coach Motley mentioned it to me before that you know Thursday night before they played he said look Winterboro can win that game and it's so interesting though because you look across the rest of the region Spring Garden loses to Coosa Christian that's not that big of a surprise but Raglan losing to Valley Head that one a little bit more surprising in that in that 3-2 matchup as well so it's, it's kind of some, a mixed bag of results in, in those first-round games between those two regions. Yeah, I checked in on both of those games throughout the night. Ragland was actually hanging in there with Valley Head until the second half, and then Valley Head just kind of did what we did to him and kind of beat him down running the football. Spring Garden could just never move the ball against Kusa, and Kusa, Kusa was all right. They weren't perfect. They weren't 94-7, to seven, but they got the job done. <laughs> but, I mean, I think we could have scored 94 Friday if we wanted to. Oh, of course. I mean, and that, you know, yeah. that's the difference between Kusa Christian and every other uh, every other coach in the state. They don't do it when they have the chance to do it. But Wadley South Lamar, the what's your Kyle read on this matchup and in, in the way that these two teams does Wadley have anything to worry about in this game? So as Adam said, I was I was at the command center last Friday night and I was able to flip through fifteen or so football games thanks to NFHS. I was able to watch that South Lamar meet game on one of the tabs I had open on my computer. Meek actually took a two touchdown lead before South Lamar ever decided to get in the ball game. And then South Lamar started taking over running the football. They like to run a wing T set, which is something we see a lot. They like to run it up the middle, fullback dives. They try to get outside. They've got size, they're big They have some speed, but they don't have the speed that we have. And we're a more rounded team than they are, and I believe that we should beat them if we handle our business, which is what our our game plan every week on offense and defense, we're not really changing much. We know who we are. We know how to win. And if we can just do our job, if all 11 men on both sides of the ball go out there and do their job, we'll win a football game. He sounds like Coach Motley in a post game interview the other night because that's that's pretty much basically what it is and 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 I agree with it. I, if Wadley plays football, they're going to be hard to beat uh, all the way through all the way through the brackets. Uh, all right, so uh, you already talked about uh, Winterboro Pickens County up on the uh, top half of the north bracket. Uh, Hackleburg is uh, playing Valley Head. Valley Head at Hackleburg, and then uh, Lynn and Coosa Christian, and that one is at Coosa Christian. Uh, so those are the, the uh, eight teams left uh, on that side of the bracket. And then uh, on the other side, uh, you got some interesting matchups. Uh, Leroy and Georgiana, Lochapoca and Brantley, Sweetwater, Maplesville, uh, and uh, Elba, Elba and Millery. About five uh, years ago, that Sweetwater, Maplesville would have been, been something the else. headliner right there. Yes. It used to be, but Maplesville not as good as they used to be. As you know, they're the two seed in their region. Lochapoca was actually the one seed right. in that region. But Lochapoca got to go to Brantley. I believe Lochapoca can win that game. Brantley not as good as they used to be. They slid in as a three seed, which is why they're at home in the second round. They slid in as either the three or the four seed in their region. But everybody expects Leroy Elba are going to be playing. They're two former 2A schools that right. dropped down in the last reclassification. Leroy beat Elba last year in the state semifinals to go to 
the state championship game, and they won. Won the state championship over Pickens County. Yep. Last year, and Leroy, of course, news came out of Leroy about halfway through the season. Their head coach was called back into active duty, so they lost their head coach. We're thankful That's for right. that head coach and his service and what he does, but they haven't really missed a beat since he's left. And Elba has one of the best running backs in the country, and. Coach Motley has been able to watch Elvin Leroy. He said they hadn't got anything that we ain't got. Well, and going back just before we finish up with this bracket, going back to the north and that Lynn Cusa Christian matchup, just circle that one, folks. That's the one you got to keep an eye on. That's going to be a a good ball game. Lynn probably going to be the biggest challenger to Cusa Christian until if if and until they meet Wadley. So uh, the winner of that game. Is probably going to be the team that meets Wadley in the state semifinals if they make it that far. So, so that's that's kind of the one to, to keep an eye on and see who comes out of that Lynn Cusa Christian game because that could be a future Wadley opponent, the winner of that one. Yep, correct on that. I believe that's going to be the team we would play in the state semifinals, whether it's on the road or at home. It's going to be either Lynn or Cusa Christian. Both of those teams they match up well. Lynn has an incredible quarterback. They like to spread it out wide, but they can run it when they want to. Their defense is tough. They're going to give Cusa Christian a run for their money, and I think Lynn actually could be the better team here. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up uh, the 1A brackets, and uh, we'll uh, come back and uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about the uh, Randolph County uh, Tigers uh, as they uh, had an uh, impressive come-from-behind win last Friday night uh, over the uh, Eagles of W.S. Neal. We are live at Guthrie's the 5-6 football hour here on iSchool Sports. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Striving to keep our excited, hungry customers happy? That's the ultimate goal of Guthrie's Famous Chicken. Over a half a century in business, still keeping it simple, fresh, hot, and fast. The Guthrie's concept allows us to be one of the fastest in the business. Guthrie's in Roanoke open seven days a week. The drive through from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. and the lobby closes at 9 p.m. Guthrie's of Roanoke, 3240 Highway 431. Main Street Animal Hospital, now at 1507 Main Street. We may have changed locations, but we are the same fur-friendly staff, taking care of your pets just like our own. We have expanded our services and our state-of-the-art facility to include grooming, increased boarding spaces, ultrasound, and radiology. Main Street Animal Hospital offers an online pharmacy where meds can be delivered straight to your house. Open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5.30, Fridays 8 to 4, and Saturday 8 to noon. The all-new Main Street Animal Hospital, 1507 Main Street, Roanoke, Alabama, 334. All right, back here for the 5-6 football hour. Now we move into uh, Class 3A. And uh, what a come-from-behind win for Coach Pat Prestridge and the Randolph County Tigers. uh, As they hosted W.S. Neal last Friday night, they were down 24 to 7. They made a huge rally to post a 48 to 36 win. Uh, They shut out W.S. Neal in the second half. Tied the game in the fourth quarter and then uh, uh, at 36 and then claimed the go-ahead touchdown a little more than halfway through uh, in the uh, fourth quarter. Another strong rushing attack from uh, Randolph County. Mo Winston, 137 yards. Uh, Avion Willis had another 154 on the ground. And some timely passes. Uh, the biggest being Gavin Worth- – Gavin, excuse me, I'll get it out in a minute. Gavin, Gavin Wortham's uh, – reception uh, late setting up a go-ahead touchdown uh, in that ball game. Uh, one of them jumped high to make the catch, caught the ball, drew a pass interference call, caught it inside to five. You don't have to just talk about it. Show it. And, yeah, uh, I mean, we can show it. Show and, uh, it. Uh, yeah, just, right just, just go ahead and show it. Let's, uh, let's see. Watch this. He's so. down by a touchdown. Eight minutes left in the game. Avion throws it up. It up. To well, work on one on one ball, goodness. pass interference doesn't matter. He's down to about the two or three yard line, and Mo Winston punches it in on the next play. And that was the picture that was in credit to photographer Philip Hurd that took yes. a picture. He was on the actually on the visitor sideline, uh, taking a picture from that angle. So he got the 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 receiver looking directly at the lens of the camera and, and hauling that ball in. Gavin Wortham, a great catch right there. And that and uh, Randolph County uh, winning that game as I said, forty-eight to thirty-six. Uh, they will go on the road tomorrow night to uh, St. James, the defending three uh, A champions from uh, last year. But uh, guys, that was uh, it was fun for me to watch. Go back and watch the video of the Randolph County game uh, this week because I, I was like, you know, what what did they do? And I was hoping Richard or Braxton uh, might be here. Uh, 
by this, but uh, I, Coach Pressure's made some defensive adjustments at halftime after being down, and uh, he uh, uh, and Jerry's telling me a little bit about the game too, because they, they 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 was right. There was there was a, a, a turnover. Uh, Ennis had the the field goal that got it to thirty six to thirty. It was thirty six tw- or thirty six twenty seven. Twenty four yard field goal, and yep. and he kicked a twenty four yard field goal that was uh, huge uh, in in the game because it got him to to within that one score. Uh, and uh, but there was some, and, and the reason that was is the two point conversion. So WSDL right. was was going for two every time they're making time. it. That's why they had that twenty four to seven lead. Is because it wasn't because they kicked a field goal. It's because they got three touchdowns and three two point conversions that got right. that twenty four points. So that's why Randolph County not only was behind, but they were chasing the points as well. And that field goal really closed that gap. It was a big three points. Yeah, that was a huge three pointer in the, in the game. And then the defensive adjustments, like I said, they were down at halftime and they shut out WS Neal's offense uh, in the in the second half. And that's a, can't, yeah, can't that's play. amazing considering how WS Neal scored all their points. Big play after big play. The shortest scoring run I think was 35 yards mm-hmm. they had some pass plays uh and some running plays they, they kind of hit them from both sides but the shortest play out of all of all five of those first half touchdowns was 35 yards they had one for 80 they had a couple that were over 50 I mean it was just big plays and then uh, and then nothing Randolph County defense figured something out shut off that valve for those big that big play spigot and 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 you know the turnovers helped you know Avion Willis has a has an interception, I think his 10th of the season. That is correct. And and he's having an excellent season as a defensive back. We've talked about that several times uh, in addition to his quarterback play. But, you know, they get a total of three turnovers in the game, interception, two, two recovered fumbles, and that helps swing it as well. They didn't have to defend as much when the other team is coughing it up, and, and that helped fuel that comeback. And, and and having Avion at quarterback, he kind of played like a four-year starter. Thank you, Jerry, because I, I was actually going to mention that that you know you got that leadership from him. And and they I, never panicked, right? And and the thing that Avion did that really, and I would love to know more about when his running yards came because he's not a runner. This is a Avion Willis last year. I, I looked up the stat, and his numbers were a little bit better going into Friday night, but he ran thirty times. For 30 yards last year, he was not. He didn't. That's not what he does in that right. offense. So for him to go out and run six times for 154 yards, he didn't get in the end zone, but it didn't matter because he was setting the table and, and sort of lighting the fire, you know, providing the spark for that offense. In the way that he did it with his legs, that to me shows as much of anything. Of I've had this capability. I've just had it in my back pocket for all this time. Now we need it. My senior year, like we said last week. He's never won a playoff game. That senior class at Randolph County never won a playoff game. He found a way to, to, to get it done as much as anybody else on both sides of the football. Impressive display of running by Avion Wills, something he doesn't normally do. He played like Jalen Milrow. <laughs> I mean, he, he was, could throw yes, it, he, he could run it, he could do whatever he wanted. And I saw Jerry sent you a text that if there's one guy that you can always bet on to make a really big comeback, it's going to be Coach Pat Prestridge. I saw Jerry mention this, but I was at that game where Randolph County went to Piedmont in the state semifinals, actually made the huge comeback and scored with less than a minute left in the yeah. ball game. Brody Wortham. Yes. Brody Wortham and took them to the state championship game against Hillcrest Evergreen. And like you said, this was 24-7 to in the first quarter. They could have folded. They could have quit. But I was talking to Richard earlier before you showed up at corner one, and he said Coach Pat Prestridge's message to the team was win this down. Win this down, and if you just keep winning every down, keep clawing, keep digging out of that hole, and just never quit. And they never did. They never gave up. They always believed they could come back and win. And that's a really talented offense in WS Neal. There's so many athletes they had all across the board, but Randolph County never gave up, and they had the eye of the tiger when they needed it. Yeah, it's it's impressive. You don't see comebacks like that. No. We've all watched a lot of high school football. It doesn't happen. And and usually a team that goes up like that, they go up like that for a reason because they're the better team. And and typically those leads grow. They don't go the other direction. When you're down 24-7 in the first half of a playoff game, the final score is usually 50 to 16, you know, whatever it is. It, it gets it gets out of hand. This game did not go that way and that that just backs up everything you just said about 
you know, the mindset of that Randolph County team to not give in and, and give up when that when that score was out of hand. All right, so Randolph County was down sixteen to nothing early in the game, and uh, let's go to uh, to Moe's first oh, touchdown yeah. run. This is his Mo first carry of the night. So he he was not involved in the offense early in the running game at least, and he got free, and ran it for fifty nine yards. No and that was the other thing too is Mo Winston's kind of been the guy for them, the big play guy, and he did get his yards. You mentioned I think one hundred and thirty seven yards. 51, 59 on that one. He got 42 on his last carry in between. So that's how, what, do the math. That's what, 101 yards? So he had 36 yards on 16 other carries. They shut him down pretty much in that running game, but mm-hmm. still Randolph County was able to find a way to make that comeback without game-long productivity from from their biggest playmaker. And those were hard yards that yeah. he had to get to because the defensive tackles from WS Neal were huge, and they were stuffing the A-gap every chance they got. And I mentioned it on our broadcast on Thursday night. Two of the best running backs in the class of 2026, maybe in the country, are in this county. <laughs> Mo Winston right. and Jaquez Wilkes, both of them are sophomores. And you talk about two incredible running backs to watch. They're great. Either one of them, if you ever have a chance to see either one of them, go watch it because it's you know, worth the price of admission every time. And go, Mo Winston, just in, we're talking about he's, he was kind of shut down. What Like I just said, he did have like the two the two big long runs. But still, 137 yards, four touchdowns on a night where it really wasn't a good night for him. And that's a, that, that, that tells you about the kind of skill and, and ability that he has when he gets the ball in his hands. Never panic. They just kept chugging away getting the points when they could get them, and kept closing the gap, and then they finished the football game. That's what was impressive. Let's watch uh, Austin Terrell's uh, yeah, touchdown run. In the back. And this is a guy we don't talk about probably yes. enough. Yeah, he's yeah. he's that big uh, bowling ball back, a big physical back. He's not slow. He's not, he's not going to beat Mo Winston in a foot race, but he's not slow either, and he can get some speed and get some separation when he gets some space. But he's also got that physicality to him. And it's just a really, really good balance that they have with with a guy that can break it from anywhere, Mo Winston, and a guy that can pound it in. You know, Mari Molden's another guy that fits that description as well. They've got really two that that fit that description in, in Austin Terrell and Mari Molden, and and uh, Terrell was the guy two touchdowns in that game on Friday. And they and look that and Jerry, Jerry he, Jerry's he, he must, he'd tell him to come on and just and get he, on the show. But he must have he must have ESP or something because I was fixing to talk about the, the offensive line. Right, right? Yeah. they just kept opening holes in that second half. I don't know. I'm sure Coach P made some adjustments. Uh, whatever he did, it worked. Uh, and and they, we've talked about their offensive line and how good they are, how big they are, uh, and and they're going to present problems for people. Yeah, and that's uh, offensive line, running backs. It's 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 just a beautiful dance when when those two things are, are working together well. And and really, one without the other, it doesn't work. I mean, you you can have a great running back, but if there's nowhere to run, you know, he, there's only so much he can do. You can have a great offensive line, but if there's not a back that knows how to to find that space. There's only so much you can do. So when you have both, like Randolph County does, it's really impressive to watch. Well, and and you talk about – we talked about it earlier. We talked about Wadley. But you look at, at Randolph County, another team that hasn't had to rely on the pass – they threw – I didn't see his stats, what Willis was uh, Friday night. Wasn't a great but, night. I think but, maybe three of eight or something like that. Yeah, wasn't, wasn't Not a great night throwing. But the, if, if it was three for eight, the three that he had were huge right. passes. Right. They can throw the football. Yeah, Avion has <laughs> – I mean, we talked about how he runs. What what He does not have to prove anything in the way he throws the football. He has proven that over the past two seasons. You could put the ball in his hands – at any point in any game, and he's going to probably do something positive and effective with with with, a, with, with the passing game. So uh, I have no doubts about his abilities to do that at, at, when called upon to do it. And Jerry mentioned the four good high school running backs for us in the backfield when we go into wishbone. And I was thinking that the whole time because when Wadley played Randolph County, it was the fullback that had the biggest night of them all. It yes. was Mo had a good night. And Terrell had a good night, but it was really the fullback on a fullback trap play that really killed us the whole night. Uh, number eight, uh, not number eighteen. I forget. It might be. 12. It's probably Molden. Yeah, twelve. Molden. Yeah, Molden. Yeah. Amari Molden. Yeah, Amari yeah. Molden. Yeah. He's a great fullback, runner, and blocker. Either way. Yeah, yeah. They they've got some pieces for sure. And those guys play on defense too. Yep. The running backs. 
So, yeah. all right. So, with that win over W.S. Neal, that sets up round two. Randolph County, as we said, will travel to um, – St. St. James. James in Montgomery uh, tomorrow night, uh, and they will take on uh, quarterback K.J. Jackson, an Arkansas commit. A team, this is a team that I've seen personally a couple of years in a row. Uh, St. James uh, posted an open opening round win over Op. 41 to 7. They were 8 and 2 on the regular season, 6 and 0 in region 3 to emerge as the number 1 seed. Their only two losses were to 5A Charles Henderson who is still in the playoffs. Uh incidentally plays uh Gulf Shores uh, tomorrow night. Uh and then their other loss was uh to 4A Hanley, I think the score was 55-27, if, if my both bigger recollection. Schools. Sounds and right, both, yeah. both bigger schools. And two schools that could make a run in the playoffs, as Charles, Charles Henderson played for the state championship last year. That's right. Right, yeah. So, they, they, you know, no shame in either one of those losses for St. James. And, and you get better by playing those kind of games. And, and I and you look at you look at St. James and you look at Randolph County, polar opposites when it comes to offense. Polar op- opposites. Uh, St. James is going to play a fast-paced game. They're going to put the put the ball in the arm of K.J. Jackson, the quarterback, uh, who probably – he's committed to Arkansas, but he's probably going to end up playing baseball. Uh, yeah. They're going to put the, arm, the ball in his hands and let him throw. Uh, they've got a couple of good good receivers. Uh, he's not going to run. He can run, but he, he doesn't like he to sco- He scored double-digit touchdowns. I mean, he can run, yeah. He, yeah. and he can get in the end zone when he, when he has the opportunity to do it. He's not as limited of a runner as we've talked about like Avion is, but you're right. It's not the main part of his yeah, game that, by any means. That, and then, With him being committed to Arkansas, I always give a comp to K.J. Jefferson, their starting quarterback, because <laughs> right. he's pretty they're, much they're just like They're replacing one K.J. with another. He's when, pretty much just like him. When I made my notes, I actually typed in Jefferson <laughs> yeah, uh, he's for the game because like I was thinking about him, but. He can run it. He can throw it. He's not big as guy. big as Jefferson. Well, he's not no, he's not. He doesn't have that physique yet. Je- yeah. Jefferson is. Uh, Which he's, he's a, a load. Yeah, he Senior, he is. A, so he's, he's a big, a big, uh, a big fellow. Yes. But uh, the Tigers will uh, travel down there to uh, tomorrow night to take on the Trojans of uh, St. James, and uh, I I think the the game plan will be to keep the ball, ball control, keep it out of the explosive offensive hands of uh, St. James. And uh, I, I'm telling you, anybody out there, if you discount Randolph County in that game, they're licking their chops. They're thinking about it. They're they're the underdog. They're going to go down there and they're going to lay it out on the line. The only team out of their region to win, as Great Walter point. Welburn got destroyed by Flomaton, 34 nothing. David was hanging in with Thomasville, but Thomasville ran away, 28 nothing. And then Beulah ran into Mobile Christian, and. That went as expected. Yeah, yeah, Randolph County, the only team left from that region. So, and we've seen it. We talked about it all year. I don't really care who Randolph County is playing. They can score. They can score on anybody with that offense that they've got. The pieces that we just talked about: the offensive line, those running backs, Avion Willis. Randolph County can score. The question will be, how many stops can they get? You know, we, we've seen St. James and the, and the power of that offense with KJ Jackson and and. You know that's the that that is the defining question of this game. Who is going to get the most stops? And if Randolph County can find a way to do that, I think they can keep pace with them offensively. It's just a, a trick of of finding a way to to keep keep St. James out of the end zone. The best defense is to keep your offense on the field. Yeah, if they can do that three yards in a cloud of dust and 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 grind it down the field and not get into a shootout where they're just trading big plays. That that's the formula there for Randolph County. And if they can win the turnover battle, that will yep. be huge. If they're able to get a few turnovers yes. and convert that into long drives for touchdowns, that could be huge for Randolph County. And they have a real shot at winning this one. They just got to slow down the pace of play because, as you mentioned, polar opposite offenses. You got one that wants to go fast and try to score with 24 seconds on the play clock, and then you've got one that's running the play clock down to one before they ever snap it. Yeah, and it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. This will be. This will be the toughest opponent that Randolph County's faced this year, this, and, and that's what you expect when you get into the playoffs. That's the teams you're going to face. They're going to be good, and so that's that's what they're looking at right now. And if you keep winning, and I heard this directly out of Coach P's mouth, 
if you keep winning, it doesn't matter where you face the team. You're going to face somebody that is really, really good at some point in time, and and that and that's you but know it starts it, this for week. them. For them, it it starts Friday night. Uh, the winner will take on uh, the winner of uh, Strawn and Thomasville, and it's in Strawn. It's in Strong. Strong must be in Andalusia. Is that right? It is. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, so they'll take on uh, the, the winner of those that game. Uh, then the top half of the bracket, Mobile Christian takes on Houston Academy. Uh, Flomaton at Trinity. So, uh, well, it's in Flomaton. Interesting games. Yeah, Trinity at Flomaton. But, yeah, Mobile Christian, the number one ranked team in the state. Uh, so they're, they're probably feeling pretty strong about their chances of, of marching and advancing through. You look at St. James, obviously we talked about them. They're def- the defending state champions, so they got to feel good about their possibilities. Randolph County obviously trying to, to spoil that. Uh, you know, you look at a team like Thomasville, Trinity. I mean, there's there's some teams in there that, that, you f- that probably feel pretty good about their chances on that side of the bracket. And that's that side of the bracket. Uh, Gordo and Geraldine play. Lauderdale County at uh, – play or – Playing at Piedmont. Playing at Piedmont. Piedmont uh, snuck into the 3A playoffs and it, then beat yes. J.B. Pennington in round one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't discount Pennington in that other side of the bracket. Uh, Madison Academy and Mars Hill and That'll Sylvania be. and Winfield. Madison Academy, Mars Hill, a battle of private schools, which 3A is full of. Yeah, there's a bunch of private schools. It sort of seems disproportionate for that classification. There's a lot of private schools in 3A still going. Madison Academy, Mars Hill, Mobile Christian, Houston Academy, there's four. St. James, Trinity. St. James, Trinity. That's six yep. out of 16. Six out of 16 left. Yep. That, that is that is correct. Uh, we will have that game uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Jerry Huddleston and Braxton. Not Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> See, he's texting me. Richard Pike and Braxton Daniel will be on the call uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Airtime for that one will be uh, 620. Uh Audio side, audio only. Uh, St. James does have an NFHS camera that if anybody wants to uh, watch or subscribe, uh, they can. But uh, tune in to Richard and Jerry uh, Braxton tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, no. Jerry. You going to time more back, yeah. back to last He's year with Jerry. He got to go. Jerry's got to go watch the boy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, 620 for that, uh, for pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff from uh, Montgomery. And uh, tell you what, guys, uh, that's going to wrap uh, 3A up. When we come back, we'll uh, look at uh, Class 4A here on iSchool Sports Network, uh, the 5-6 football hour live from Guthrie's. I'm attorney Chris Baldwin from Roanoke, Alabama. Here at Chris Baldwin Law, we specialize in personal injury, medical malpractice, real estate closings, and wills and estates. So, if you've been in a car accident, need to close on your new home, or simply need an estate plan, go ahead and schedule your free consultation by calling 334-863-4555 or by going to chrisbaldwinlaw.com. No representation is made that the quality of legal services is greater than those performed by other attorneys. There's your everyday run-of-the-mill power tools, then there's Husqvarna, available at Meadows Farm Equipment. Husqvarna delivers innovative designs that feel good in your hands with power and performance that are up to any task. Pick up your Husqvarna tools at Meadows Farm Equipment, 85 County Road, 811, Widawi. All right, welcome back to uh, 5-6 Football Hour. We'll jump into uh, Class 4A right now. <laughs> Uh, Hanley hosted uh, St. Michael last Friday night at Roanoke's right field. All kinds of records uh, were set that night. Most points scored by Hanley in a football game, 68. Uh, Most points scored by a Larry Strain coached football team. Uh, And also most points combined for two teams uh, in a Hanley game game, uh, at at, uh, 68. A record for... Let's see. E.J. Goss had five touchdowns, 19 carries, 326 yards, added two catches for 28 yards. Uh, Hanley amassed 521 yards rushing, another 76 through the air as Kenan Kyles completed six of nine passes with one touchdown. Nemo Askew added 102 yards on six carries and three touchdowns uh, and one memorable one on a 62-yard <laughs> run that uh, uh, he looked like an 18-wheeler plowing through 
I don't know what, but uh, we'll, get there. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. I promise you on that. Uh, Hanley will travel to uh, Tuskegee to take on the uh, Eagles of uh, Booker T. Washington. Uh, Booker T. comes out of uh, Region 2. It's the number three seed behind uh, Catholic of Montgomery and Andalusia. So, uh, watching that game, you know, I felt like Friday night that uh, anytime Hanley touched the football, they could score. It was just a matter of how many points – they needed to that, win. That he needed, you know, to win. Uh, St. Michael's, they got on the scoreboard with a long pass, busted defensive coverage. Uh, their first couple of touchdowns were were long passes, big plays. Uh, they, they didn't really sustain anything. Uh, and just my personal opinion, the the – 38 points that uh, they put on on the scoreboard, uh, they they scored some against the second and third team, you know, as well. Right. And, but it was it was it, it. Chris May said it Friday night when you rush for 521 yards. He goes, if we were still giving game balls out, I'm giving every one of the offensive linemen. He said, I don't care. I don't even care if you don't have any footballs. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are the MVP of of the game. But uh, I, I mean, I'm telling you that rushing attack, uh, it, it was uh, very impressive. Well, when you have a kid go for a, what, 107 yards and three touchdowns, you say, oh, we're doing a pretty good, pretty good. That was the number two guy. Yes. I mean, you, you Nemo Askew goes over 100, scores three touchdowns. That's a great night for anybody. He was he was second fiddle in that rushing attack for to EJ Goss, and so. That just tells you. I mean, those numbers tell you how explosive Hanley's offense was, and like you said, just scored whenever they wanted to. And Kyle's had had some rushing yards right. too. You know, yeah, they just chunk plays one right after the other. It hey. reminded me of watching Wadley on Thursday night. Pretty much every time you got the ball, you were just holding your breath, waiting on a score to happen. Wait, exactly. All right, so uh, our first highlight uh, from uh, the game is uh, EJ Goss's uh, ball right in first between run, the hashes 41 yards. As Hanley moves yeah, right to left, move back in the shotgun. In the hole here once he gets Daniel right Daniel comes the line in motion. Scrimmage. He'll go underneath. And like you said, good blocking up there. Kyle's gives the it to Goss. Goss passes it outside. Yeah. Yeah. Pouring no way. He's gone. He did a good job waiting for that to clear the hole. I, I said this about EJ on the air the other night. He brings his lunchbox every Friday night to the to the field. You better be ready for it. And EJ has gotten better and better and better every game. EJ is a guy you're not going to outwork. It's just in his personality. You're not going to outwork EJ Goss. He may not be the biggest. He may not be the fastest. But he will go out there and play harder than anybody on that field. That's just who he is. That's exactly right. All right, our next highlight, uh, uh, a little defensive uh, highlight. Third down and 10 from the 32. Rivers takes the snap out Rivers of the gun under some pressure, and he uh, is going he down. He goes down for about a, for a big it, loss. He ended up being play. about a 12-yard yeah, loss because he was, great job he was taking up. the snap from about uh, right, five to seven. Right, that's a big loss, yeah. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a huge loss, and that was that was one of the defensive uh, highlights. And then uh, maybe one of my favorite of uh, all year, uh, Nemo Askew. This uh, one was fun. Uh, on a big run. And I believe this was in the third quarter. Chris he's standing to the, the right of Patterson of now. Chris Second and 12. <laughs> Chris May, you think he's down right, right off, here. Yes. And he gets and it now out. He's out. Okay, okay. now you think he's gone. The but hang on. Down the far just side wait line. just a minute. A and into race. the picture comes and over seven. And he, he got hit by a freight train. And, and I asked Coach Strang last night about it. And, it, and he kind of laughed. And uh, he said he just wasn't going down. I said he wasn't running out of bounds either. And I bet the crowd responded to that hit. In a big way, How, I wonder what what did it sound like in the stands when he when he leveled that guy. Yeah, number seven may be a baseball. I, player I don't from remember. Now on. Yeah, I, I'm telling you that that was uh, that was the truck of uh, of the season uh, for us. And you talk about Chris May's booms. I think he got. Uh, here's another record, and I'm going to go back and count it and verify it. But when when I counted when I was doing the clips. Seven. <laughs> Seven booms. During the game. One, no, on, on that, one play. On that play. On, on one play. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to have to strap him down to the table because he he yeah. was about to go crazy. <laughs> oh, and, and, I love it. But, but I want to tell you, you know, you look at you look at the score, 68 to 38, and, and a lot of folks that didn't see it just, just see the score, that was a physical football game. 
it was very physical. Well, yeah, we talked about physicality last week and sort of previewing the game, how that would be a determining factor. And, of course, we were talking about it on the line of scrimmage and how Hanley – and it was. You know, you saw the sack, and there was certainly a lot of physicality. But when Nemo asks you, your running back lays the wood like that and, and, and brings that physicality to that position, you just see it across the board. Hanley being physical at every single spot on the field – uh, that's it's just impressive when they when Hanley plays like that. That's that's the kind of play that reminds you of the years that they won state championships. Yes, when they play physical like that and are are bringing the the fight, the contact, the the physicality to the opponent. That's when they've won titles. And and I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen this year, but but it's 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 reminiscent of that. Think think back to 2011, Breon Deberry, Quay Hunter. Duran Zachary, those three guys, what do they do so well? They line up in the wishbone and they would just beat you down for four quarters. And a really good offensive line. They, some of them exactly. weren't big. They, they may not have been as big as this bunch, but Bradley they, Bozeman, they were good. Quan Glass. Uh, I can't remember the rest of them. But yeah, it was the same way in 16. It, you know, that, that trip down to Andalusia in 16 was a, a, a lesson in physicality and, and take. Showing a team what hitting is all about, and that exactly. and that and Hanley rode that win to a, to a state championship. So and, and again we saw it in 2020. So it's it's a, it's a hallmark of quality Larry Strain championship football teams is that physicality, and this team has it. You got that right. All right. So I already mentioned the Tigers will travel to Tuskegee to take on the Eagles of Booker T. Washington. Uh, as I said, they come out of number uh, region two, the number three seed behind uh, Catholic and Andalusia. They went six and four in the regular season. They lost to Catholic, Andalusia, Trinity, and Pike Road. They advanced to tomorrow night's round two with a 22 win. 22 to 12 win over ACA uh, over in Tuscaloosa. They are coached by uh, Lawrence O'Neill, who is the uh, son of longtime real real town coach Jackie O'Neill, who posted 241 wins, uh, earning him a spot in the Alabama High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Uh, the Booker T. Washington uh, coach was an assistant at Pike Road, uh, and he's been the, the at the helm of the Eagles for the last three years. He has a 17 and 16 overall record. He is the second winning as coach in uh, Booker T. Washington uh, history with seventeen and wins. With 17 wins. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, uh, but uh, let's let's kind of look at the uh, well, at, at the brackets. Go ahead. But yeah, just first of all, Booker T. Washington. I mean, this and this is a cliche, and you hear coaches say this all the time. Well, this is not a typical three seed. But in this case, I, I'm going to echo that. This is not a typical three seed coming out of the region that they're in with. Montgomery uh, Montgomery Catholic and Andalusia, two teams that were semifinalists last year. Andalusia won the state championship. They're at that level again. Those two teams are. Losing to those two teams and finishing third is no shame at all in that. And Booker T. Washington has talent. They've got three D1 guys. One, uh, He's going as a lineman, but he does a lot for them. Uh, but he's he's listed as an edge rusher, four star edge rusher, going to Auburn. The, the running back is going to Troy. Uh, they, they've got another and guy, he, tenth grader. That's, they've got a tenth grader who is he has received multiple D one offers. So they this is a talented team, uh, one of the more talented three seeds, talented six and four, whatever you want to qu- qualify it as. This is going to be Hanley's going to have to play football this week in in a way that they haven't in a while. I yes. I, absolutely, they're going to have to come out of the gate, and they're going to have to play. It's, it, you know, don't don't look at that seven and four record. You just got to, you know, they're one and zero. Everybody's one and zero. If you're playing tomorrow night, you're one and zero. It's, it's a new season. It's going to be one of those buckle your chin strap type because it's going to be one in the trenches, yeah. and that's something that Hanley's up to. That physicality. We'll go back to it. Everybody in the county. We talked about tonight physicality at the line of scrimmage, a huge point of emphasis, and that's where that's why all three of these teams have gotten to where they are now, and it's going to be huge for Hanley. You told me earlier Booker T. Washington has only thrown the ball about 17 times the whole season. <laughs> I watched them play ACA last week in Tuscaloosa. That was another one of the games I had up in the tabs, and they line up in a wildcat. Or the Flying Eagle, I guess. And they'll run it with the quarterback. They'll run it with a running back. They'll run a reverse. And their line can make holes, and their athletes know how to make you miss. And they're big. They're they're big they up front. They're big. They're going they're gonna to match size with, with Hanley. So, like you said. All right, so let's look at the brackets. And, I, Tim, you've been talking about how the 4A brackets were going to shape up in round two, and you got your wish. All right, you got Jackson and Andalusia at Jackson. 
you got uh, down in the bottom half of the bracket in the south, you've got Bibb County hosting Jacksonville. And then you've got Montgomery Catholic, who will be hosting T.R. Miller. Mm -hmm. So it's Jackson Andalusia, Hanley B.T. Washington, Bibb County Jacksonville, and Montgomery Catholic against T.R. Miller. And and four games, and as a Hanley fan, you don't necessarily want to admit this, but it's four games where either team could win, where you don't look at it and say – there's going to be this. These four teams are going to come out of this for sure. You could you could look at any one of those games and talk yourself to any one of those teams winning those football games. The road but, teams could go four and zero this week. I mean, it's, it's very possible. It's very possible. Now, I feel good about Hanley. I'm not yeah. saying I don't, but I I'm just saying you look at that bracket. It's very unique in that respect because a lot of times, even in the second round, you see, well, well, there's one team that's that team's definitely going to win. You can't look at any of these games and say that. I feel good about Hanley, and I feel good about Montgomery Catholic. But Jacksonville, Bibb County, and Andalusia, Jackson, those two are going to be slugfest. Andalusia, as you said, won the 4A state championship last year over Cherokee County, who we'll get to there in the north side of the bracket. They'll probably walk into Tuscaloosa again. But that Jackson-Andalusia game is – to, is to 4A what the Coosa Christian yeah. and Land game is to 1A. That's one of the teams that's pretty much people think are going to have a shot to go all the way. But let's talk about what Hanley has coming up. Hanley wins this week. There is a very good opportunity that they could host the quarters and the semis. That's right. It, the bracket it is set up perfect. this time. It is. It's it, set up for Hanley very well. You know, Booker T. Washington, we can thank them for that, that yes. win and putting Hanley on the road this week sort of sets the table for Hanley to, to be at home in the next two rounds. Obviously, you got to win football games to do that. But, but yeah, it's that, that Jackson-Andalusia game, Kyle, it, you're right. I mean, the one team's going to possibly continue on and play for a state championship. Hanley will have something to say about that, we hope. Mm-hmm. And one team's going to be at home. I mean, that's, you know, it's, that's, that's the quality of that matchup. And, I, I, you know, I see that in a couple of these other ones, too. I mean, it's 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 a it's a loaded bracket. And I watched that Aniston T R Miller game and was actually surprised. Aniston got out to a sixteen nothing lead, had yes. it all the way through the third quarter. Yeah, twenty to sixteen was the final score. Yeah. I mean, this, that was a close ball game. They let T R Miller come back and beat them at the end. That it was pretty much sixteen nothing, and it was sixteen nothing Aniston at halftime. T R Miller started to make a comeback in the third quarter, and Aniston just ran out of gas. Or it could have been Aniston at home against Montgomery Catholic, but. You know, can't live off of coulda, woulda, shoulda. All right, so looking up, you've already kind of talked about the uh, the north half of the bracket. Uh, Priceville plays Brooks. Westminster Christian plays Deschler. Deschler. Uh, West Morgan and Corner and uh, Cherokee County uh, at uh, Haleyville. And I'm like Kyle. I think uh, Cherokee hey, County. Haleyville's at Cherokee County. But yeah, yep. yeah. I, I think that uh, Cherokee County – emerges and goes all the way through to the to the state championship game. Yeah, I don't know that there's anybody that has a solid argument for any other team out of the north besides Cherokee County. I haven't heard one, and, and it certainly feels like it's theirs to lose. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't see anybody giving them any kind of trouble. I figure it'll probably be them and maybe Brooks, maybe Westminster Christian. But, I think I'm kind of leaning toward the Westminster Christian. Yeah, it could be Westminster Christian. But still, I don't see them beating Cherokee County. They're just that good, which they used to be a region opponent for Hanley. They used to fight for region championships with the Hanley Tigers just two years ago. And they just continued to get better. They were able to go north, kind of in the same situation Wadley was. And good teams, you go north and usually got a better shot at it. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up uh, 4A. We will be live on the air uh, tomorrow night uh, from uh, Tuskegee. We will have uh, audio and video uh, tomorrow night on uh, via the NFHS. Uh, our two video games tomorrow night, Wadley and uh, Hanley. And like I said, uh, St. James does have an NFHS camera, so uh, you can uh, flip it on. And if you have a subscription, in. you can do all three like Kyle did. Yeah. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Talk, up as many talk as you back want and to. forth. Watch talk as many games as you want. Right, that's exactly and, right. And if you have a subscription to the Randolph Leader, you can check it after the ball game. That's right. As Tim's going to be <laughs> Hanley Booker T. Yep. He'll post a write up about it after that game's over. They have a deal going on right now. You can buy one dollar for a week, and you can get to read. I meant to do that. You this can week. read that you for the whole week. You have a subscription. I know, but you don't have to do that. But not the online subscription. That uh, comes with it. Oh, yeah. it does? If you get a printed yeah. subscription, you get it. online for free. There you go. You're learning every, all kinds of new stuff. 
What's my login? You have to tell me. Later. We're gonna tell you that. <laughs> yeah. See, he he's gonna tell me it's yeah, free, I'm, but I, <laughs> I I can't tell you. You got to set it up, but I mean it's oh, free. Okay. You, you okay. know, once you set it up, it's free. Okay. There's no. There's no. All right. See, I learned something. Yeah. So if you have that's a, that's one to put out there too. If you have a print subscription and you want to read it online, if you haven't set that up, you don't know how to set it up. Give us a call and we'll we'll, we'll walk you through that. But it's if you have a print subscription, you're you have online access for free as well. Man. Newly renovated website, easy to get to. It's a it's a pretty website now. I'm telling you, I got to check. And it we out. put the show on there. We got a spot for video, so yep. we put this show down there at the bottom. Oh, okay. We'll keep that updated every week. So okay. any, anytime this show is on YouTube, it'll be on the on the homepage on the RandolphLeader dot com. There you go. Wow. See, I've learned, learned <laughs> Look at this. See? All, all the time. i got to pay Kyle for, for being my <laughs> spokesman for bringing yeah. it up. Kyle, yeah. Kyle gave that big plug they there. He sure did. Hey, I used it last week. I used that $1 deal for a week. It's a great deal. Read every, read every sports column there was in there. All right, let's take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, uh, folks, we're going to dive uh, into uh, some uh, college football here on the 5-6 Football Hour, live from Guthrie's. Inspired by the bold bison, Southern Union students blaze new trails every single day. They press forward knowing their SU education will lead them to success. Affordable, accessible, and locally unparalleled. Whether you're transitioning to a university or launching straight into a lucrative career, a degree from SU SEC can help you blaze your path. Three locations, dedicated faculty and staff, endless possibilities. It's all waiting for you at Southern Union. It's time to venture forward. Register today. Are you planning your retirement or your children's or your grandchildren's education? The Knowles Group is here to assist. Deeply rooted in Randolph County for more than 20 years. No matter your financial situation, the Knowles Group can help. For any questions or to set up an appointment, call Danny Knowles at 205-602-5065. The Knowles Group, located at 3800 Colonnade Parkway Suite 540 in Birmingham. Securities offered through Osaic Wealth Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Osaic Wealth is separately owned in other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Osaic Wealth. It's the Falcons. All right, welcome back uh, to the five, <laughs> five, six football hour uh, here live from uh, Guthrie's as uh, we uh, join uh, or we start talking about uh, a little college football. Uh, we've already kind of said that uh, not many games uh, in the SEC that uh, it's cupcake week cupcake as uh, week. Tim described it. But uh, uh, the first thing that uh, I, I got to get out there is uh, uh, Tim had started circulating the uh, the new the banner, new the, po- the logo for you have it? the uh, SEC. I got it on my phone. Oh, somewhere. you should have put it in I, here so I, we could show yeah, it. Yeah, I, I didn't. You could really make all the Alabama fans mad. I didn't think about oh, that, but uh, Tim Tim sent uh, a couple of us uh, that. And speaking of that, uh, uh, <clears throat> Bryant filled in last weekend uh, for uh, Matt on the uh, sideline. Is Matt uh, at uh, EMS conference uh, down in Gulf Shores? Good to hear and, Bryant's voice again yep, on, yeah, on High School good. Sports Network. Did a great job. He, yeah, he did. did you? And I should have put this on here. Uh, he almost pulled a Tim Altork on the sideline. He did. Oh no! He, he, he almost got he <laughs> almost got taken <laughs> taken out yeah. on a on a play uh, down there. But he did the Texas two step and uh, jumped a little bit and he's got nimble. out of the way. He, he can still move. He's he's a young strapping young man. As, he could still get around. As a little he bit. told Chris May, he said, "Look, I lost a little weight. I got a little speed back." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he, did. He, got, he gained a step or two. <laughs> he, he gained a step or two. But uh, so anyway, you guys were circulating the uh, you and Bryant were circulating the uh, logo for the SEC championship game between Alabama and Georgia. Come Coming up, and uh, describe. I have to describe. Describing it's not going to be as funny as looking at it, but as, or funny as it was to me. But it's 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 a picture of Ugga the Georgia Bulldog, and then it's a picture of Dumbo the elephant. Yeah, <laughs> with an Alabama hat on, and that's that's the, the. I sent it to Adam and Bryant and said, "Here's the new official logo of the SEC championship game: Georgia that versus Alabama." Going. Yeah, that that <laughs> Bryant guy couldn't stand yeah, it. Uh, I, I, he couldn't stand it. Yeah. I told Tim when I saw him last he night. The bear on that yeah. one. I, I saw <laughs> I said, man, I said, you uh, you got Bryant going. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I, I want to say this. Bryant, Tim and I want to go to the SEC championship It's game, time to pony up, Bryant. It's <laughs> time for you to to, to, hey. to cough it up. Yo, it's a, this is a test of friendship now. You got Adam. <laughs> Adam's got the connection with the airplane. Yeah, so he's yeah. Going, we, got the, we got transportation. I'm not contributing anything to this. Bryant's paying for the tickets. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> Hey, there you go. I'll, hey, that's a that's a sweet deal for me. Alabama seven and zero in Mercedes in the new Mercedes Benz. That's right. 
Yeah, I may not want to go to this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to that. I had to get that out there. But uh, uh, big games in, uh, are around the top 25. Uh, number 10, Louisville takes on uh, Miami. Uh, and interestingly enough, interestingly enough, Miami is favorite in this yes. game by half a point. I, well, yeah, I, it's a pick, basically a pick, pick them. Pick and, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people are on Miami thinking – Louisville's sort of a, a paper tiger a little bit. You know, the clock's ticking on them, and they've only lost, what, one time and and ranked very highly because of that just that one loss. But, you know, you look at the teams they beat outside of Notre Dame, maybe there's not a whole lot of substance to that Notre record. Dame, everybody talks about Notre Dame being That's a still a good part. win. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not. For Louisville, it is. <laughs> For Ohio For State, it is, I guess. <laughs> well, that's what they're getting. Yeah, according to the committee. Yeah. Yeah. According to the committee. I've told you all Notre Dame. But huh? that's – yeah, I like. I kind of like Miami in that game. I, I think Miami at home, you know, they played Florida State pretty tough last week. I, you know, maybe they can pull something off. I just don't know who the quarterback is going to be for Miami. Yeah, we don't know that. That's the only That's the only thing that has me really thinking Louisville is because I don't know who's playing quarterback for Miami, and they've had that quarterback controversy. In the well, it's probably going to be Van Dyke. The other yeah. kid got hurt and, and is probably out for the rest of the season, so Van Dyke's going to be the, I would guess, be the quarterback. And Tyler they, Van Dyke got booed last week by the home fans. And, and he had a chance to come on and play the hero against Florida he State did. through an interception, so I, you know who knows. All right, number 17, Arizona will host number 22, Utah. Arizona, one of the hottest teams uh, in the country. Yes, they're they favored by 10. And their coach, Jeb Fish, is one that everybody's talking about as being a replacement somewhere for for some of these jobs that have come open. And <laughs> and the the season that they're having is a big reason for that. The way, the reason that they're talking about him, they, you know, they're seven and three. Yeah, ranked, you know, ranked higher than Utah. That, who would have thought that? I think they've won five in a row. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, on they a good little winning streak. And who would have thought they'd come into this game ranked higher than Utah? That, that, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, speaking of coaches being fired, I saw a tweet that was pretty funny. It said, uh, "Jimbo Fisher." And Chip Kelly should start a podcast and name it Fish and Chips so they could, <laughs> they could talk about football since they're both losing their they're job. They're going to both be out of – Chip Kelly not out of a job yet, but they're yeah. saying he's the, top, the clock is ticking on him. And speaking of fired Fish coaches, I mean, when, when, you, when you're when you sitting there and you're looking, okay, we're not even through the season. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, teams it's, start – It's kind of like everybody was waiting for Jimbo to get fired. Right. It, it, everybody kind of – there were some other teams sort of lined up behind that domino, and then when when – the plug got pulled there. the the whole The whole thing started to drain. So best job in the world is to be a fired SEC football coach because you're pretty man. much set. Yep, you're set for life. If, if Texas A and M, uh, just this a word of advice for anybody out there that is, is in a position to, to take this phone call. If Texas A and M calls you and offers you the Old job, money. take it, take it, take the job. I don't yes. care if you want to coach there or not. Yes. Take it. You will be set for life. Take that old money. That's my 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 message from little old Roanoke, Alabama. 21, Kansas State. 25, Kansas. State favored by a little over a touchdown. A little over a touchdown, that's right. Yeah, and I saw the Kansas starting quarterback said he will be back next year. He got hurt earlier in the season as Kansas was undefeated at the time when he got hurt, and he was a big reason why Kansas was undefeated. But he said he'll be back next year. This game, it's a toss-up. It could go either way. It's not a toss-up in my mind because (laughs) – Jalen Daniels, the quarterback that you're talking about. Of course, is LSU playing? has Jaden Daniels. This yeah. is Jalen Daniels, and he's kind of a very similar style of quarterback and, and, and equally as effective. Hasn't played a lot this year. He played the first three games and has been out. And as you said, just announced this year, that, or this tonight, that he's coming back for next year. The, the backup, Jason Bean, I'm all over Kansas, so I know this stuff. Kansas has been my, my, my bandwagon team yep. this year. So Jason Bean, the backup, he was hurt too, so there's some question about whether he can play. He's probably the best backup quarterback in the country. He's been leading the charge as they've climbed the rankings. He did, got hurt in the first quarter last week, and that's why a big reason why they lost that game. Mm-hmm. If he's healthy – Kansas has a very good shot in this game. If he's not, Kansas State is going to probably run away with it. Yep. That's that's my take on it. I agree. All right, number five, Washington at number 11, Oregon State. The Beavs are favored by two and a that's half. A little, are you surprised that Oregon State's favored against Washington here? That's DJ, a little – that DJ, one blew my mind. DJ Uyungle against Michael Penix Jr., and you're talking about Penix being one of the guys that's up there for the Heisman race. And kind of a prove-it game for Washington, which I think we're all in the same kind of agreement that they should have lost to Oregon, but Dan Lanning kind of gave that away. Yeah, and to me, Washington is becoming 
in my mind, for me, what TCU was last year, where you keep waiting for them to lose. You, you, I, every game I, towards the end of the season, TCU kept winning. I thought, surely at some point they're going to lose. This is TCU. They're not going to go undefeated. Yep. And eventually they lost in the Big 12 championship game, but but they got there unbeaten. And so you kept waiting for that shoe to drop, and it never did. Is that what's going to happen here with, with, with Washington? And again, Phoenix was Max Duggan. Max right. Duggan for TCU. Came out of nowhere. He was the only reason why they were still – able to hang in the ball games just because he would play his heart out and would will them to a win. And Phoenix has done the same thing for the Huskies. I saw a stat talking about Phoenix this week. And they're talking about Jalen Milrow. Mm -hmm. They were comparing the two. They both have the same number of touchdown passes mm -hmm. uh, or touchdowns. Total touchdowns. Total touchdowns, touchdowns, I think, is what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and turnovers – Jalen Milrow has one less, and Milrow's not even in the Heisman talk. The stats were were incredible. Now the the passing total passing yards, Phoenix has got it, but right. uh, it, he's it playing a lot of lesser defenses than. Milrow. Well, but he's yes, he's been outside of one or two games. He he hit the ground running and grabbed Phoenix. You know, grabbed the attention, had the attention preseason. He had some high preseason. Milrow did not. Grabbed the attention, you know. He earned that attention, and when the, once the season began, played very well. He's had some down games. Milrow got sacked for the USF games, so right? And so the way that the season started sort of shifted the perception, even though they sort of ended up at the same place. They've kind of gotten there in two different routes. So it's it's. Uh, but you're right. I mean, the way Milrow is playing right now is Heisman worthy. I mean, he is as good and effective as any quarterback in the country. Name somebody and put Milrow right next to him. I mean, to me, there's there's. There's not a drop off for anybody, even Jaden Daniels, who, you know, who right. at LSU, who's having a you know, Heisman like season, but but Milrow is right there with it. But him. they have so many losses, and you don't see typically a Heisman come from a team that's got three losses or or more than uh, that. Yeah, and but it's Lamar not, Jackson. Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson is one. Tim of Tebow, Robert, Robert Griffin the third, Tim Tebow. Uh, but you know, there there's there are examples of just Man's the play out. being so compelling, and there not being enough competition. Uh, behind him, where he, where one player just separates himself, win or lose, and, and that, that may be what's happening here. Yeah, he's not going to get the Heisman. <laughs> well, right now Vegas has Bo Nix as the Heisman favorite. I might buy that one. Yeah, he I, is, could see I, I might buy that. One. I he's a uh, minus three hundred. Every every commentator that I listen to, every college football podcast that I've heard, it's Jaden Daniels. I, to me, everybody, and it, and it's partially because of the game he just had. You know where he throws for three fifty and he and he runs for two hundred and and does something that's never been done before. But so that's part of it, and then maybe he'll come back to earth and have some more average performances to close out the season. That'll bring him back to the pack. But right now, everybody's saying he's the one to win it. He's put up better numbers than Joe Burrow did in twenty nineteen, and uh, his receivers may not be as good as Justin Jefferson and. Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase, and Chase. And all those guys. Yeah, yeah. that's that's exactly. But he does right. have Malik Neighbors, who is the number one receiver as far as touch, as far as yards are concerned and then Brian Thomas Jr who was number 1 as far as touchdowns were concerned in the NCAA so he does have some pretty good weapons and the offensive line is semifinalist for the Joe Moore award so they're pretty good as well yeah don't get me started on the Joe Moore award <laughs> nah. George right. is up for it too yeah should have won it the last 2 years mm -hmm. yeah all right, let's jump into the uh, SEC, which is uh, we've already prefaced it as Cupcake Week. Uh, Ole Miss host UL Monroe. You pick the spread, you pick the points. Uh, no contest there. Yep. Uh, the question, the biggest question surrounding the Ole Miss program is, and I think he uh, the rumors pretty much said it the other night. What did he say when he played Georgia and he got beat? His comment was, "We got to recruit better." Uh, does that mean he's Texas leaving? A &M. Does that mean he's leaving? <laughs> yeah. You, you go. And when he said that, the job wasn't open. So, no. he wasn't – there's not a straight line between that comment and that job. But they, his his name has come up a lot. Hey, you can sign the number one class ever and still not do anything with them, and they can all be gone after the first year. We saw that happen. Uh, that's that's right. All right, Southern Miss at uh, Mississippi State. Uh, the Bulldogs uh, are favored by 14, and they'll have a uh, interim head coach, another one that uh, that's right. got the uh, axe on Monday, Zach Arnett. Two, two, that, that game was uh, the, the death knell for both those coaches. That it's crazy. They because play each other and both get fired. A&M wins 51-14, and then you get your walking papers after winning that game. 
Yeah, that the that day would, after before that the other me. coach got fired, they they had already met previously in the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, 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 that decision was, a, was made. A, a done deal. Uh, and folks, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on these because if an SEC school loses, uh, other than uh, the the two conference games that are actually going to be played, uh, I'll be three, very, three very, conference games. Three conference games. If it was Southern Miss, Kentucky, in, South Carolina, yeah. Missouri, and uh, Florida, 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 and then Georgia, Georgia Tennessee, all, all yeah. SEC East games. If it yeah. was Southern Miss in other years, I would say they have a shot at it. But Southern Miss is just not as good as they have been this year. Yep. All right. So we now we jump to Texas A and M. They'll host uh, Abilene Christian. A uh, and M parted ways with Jimbo this week, uh, who is probably uh, sipping cocktails on an island that he bought. <laughs> yeah, <that's> honestly, <laughs> somebody said he has two ranches. He's yeah. he's bought two ranches, and he's got to pick which one to go to. Yeah, I'd like a couple I, of ranches. I think the biggest question about Jimbo Fisher is when will he be in the Nick Saban rehabilitation program. <laughs> or show up at Kirby Smart on the, as yeah. an analyst Could, on the Georgia Kirby. staff. Yeah. Speaking of Mississippi State, did y'all see who was being linked to the head coaching job of Mississippi State? Uh, I've heard a lot of names. Dan mm. Mullen was one of the names right, that I heard. Yeah, yeah I, I did see that. Yep. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, now we'll talk about – well, let's go to Florida Florida International at uh, Arkansas. Razorbacks are favored by uh, four touchdowns. Yep. Keep, keep going. KJ Jefferson. Yep. Let's keep, get to the, get to the meat. Going. Let's go. Uh, Auburn, going. Auburn hosts 8-3 uh, and three, New Mexico State. Auburn is favored by 24. Auburn looked good last week. Auburn might have turned the corner. That, that's, they, they, they of might course, they something. turn the corner right before they get to Alabama. That's, <laughs> that's how it right. always goes. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That could be interesting. And uh, number eight, Alabama will host uh, Chattanooga, and the uh, point spread was uh, too big to list. Uh, a letdown for the Tide. <laughs> Chattanooga is eight and three. That, they're one double A though. That's not even a. They're not even bowl eligible. They're gonna send the mocks back to Chattanooga without yeah, this. You talk about name your score. <laughs> All right, Florida at Missouri. The Tigers pounded the Volunteers last week, uh, and they are an eleven and a half point favorite. As I have said, I am on the Missouri bandwagon, as Tim has been on the Kansas one. Missouri has been my. One of my favorite teams to watch. And, boy, was it fun to watch them just whip up on Tennessee last week. Yes, it was. I enjoyed that, too. I'm not – I'm no fan of Tennessee, obviously, for obvious reasons, being a Georgia fan. And so, watching them get get humbled a little bit. And, and Missouri literally run all over them with Schrader, the way he ran that football. 36-7. to seven. I mean, it was a that was a tour de force, and it was, it was impressive. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a believer in Missouri. I, I'm, I, if I'm betting that game, I'm taking Missouri, and I'm, and I'm taking the – uh, I'm leaving the 11 points on the table. And I think Florida got bum rushed by LSU last week. Yes, yeah. Got that was a little. That was a little. Uh, that was revenge. the one where Jaden Daniels threw for over 350 and ran for over 200 in the same game. Yeah. Kentucky at South Carolina. Wildcats are favored by one and a half points. Both teams and coaches need a win. I got Kentucky with way more than one and a half. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I. I, I Keep waiting for South Carolina to do something surprising. You know, the, it was this time last year where they sort of, you know, surprised Tennessee. people by winning, right? You know, beating Tennessee and then they beat, they beat Clemson. And so, yep. you know, the, they did that back to back at the end of the season. I just I keep waiting for that something like that, a win that they're not supposed to get. Maybe it happens this week. Well, Debo used that bulletin board materials last week. They came out and played hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Clemson plays uh, North Carolina this week. Yeah, that was. I watched that North Carolina Duke game, and I was really hoping Duke was going to win. And then they gave it away in overtime. Yep. With a backup quarterback, almost won the game, took the lead with under a minute left, and Drake May got the ball back with about forty seconds left, and that's all he needed. I went ten and one last week. Yeah, you did. did. You sure did. None of us got. The one we missed was Clay Central. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, every one of us. Everybody, every single one of us, except for uh, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Taylor picked you, and that's right. Did he? Yeah, oh, he did. I didn't even he see. Did. I didn't even see that. Wow. Yep. Okay. All right. So uh, our final uh, game uh, in the SEC, uh, the number one Georgia Bulldogs traveled to Knoxville to take on the Vols. My opinion, no letdown for Georgia. They got the tide in their eyes what scares me is i actually feel the same way i, I you know and that's what scares me a little bit when you is start, it because you feel the thinking the same way i am that you that you're scared <laughs> that you're resembling me yeah I, yeah that scares me that you and i are thinking alike that's what's scary about that exactly but yeah i mean georgia man they locked it in last week yeah, against uh, against uh uh what you call it 
Ole Miss. Ole Miss. And, uh, yeah. Number I mean, nine at the time. I mean, they they just just never had a challenge outside of that once it was – after it was 14 to 14. It's almost like Kirby just – like we talked, we were talking about with Hanley, where you know before the show, where sometimes when Hanley they'll they'll give up a score early on and and they'll kind of figure it out defensively, and that's the last you'll see the other team in the end zone. Georgia sort of seems like they do that a lot. Where they play with their food and give the other team just enough hope to keep them in the game, and then they just. But it's 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 like okay, we see what you're doing now. Yeah. That that was successful that time. Now we're gonna now we're gonna stop you from doing that. Fool me and, one time. Yeah, and I to me. The only thing that gets tricky is if Georgia starts turning the ball over on the road, the crowd gets into it. We saw it happen to Alabama last the year. Where get into it. The refs get it. I mean, no, you know, the Tennessee fans don't throw any mustard on the field. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. if they control, if they <laughs> behave themselves, and so it's 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 you know, if that, if it gets into that situation, then Georgia may have something to worry about. I mean, we saw it at, at Auburn, yes, where Georgia that game was close and they had to score late to win that game. So that. If the, if it gets into that situation, Tennessee obviously a more talented team than Auburn, so you could be in trouble there. But I, I don't know Georgia. I feel like is locked in and ready to compete for the championships that it set out to compete for, and and Tennessee is just the next bump in the road. Rocky Top looking like they're headed back for rock bottom, and it's only a ten point spread in that game. Yeah, yeah. that that was that, that it was kind of weird to me. That's a little weird. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. All right, guys. Uh, next week is uh, Thanksgiving. We will do a show. I won't Tim. be here. I'll yeah, be here. Well, you yep. may have to join us by phone. I'm, we, I, I could, I could get on we, the phone. We, we, we'll, we'll get you uh, on the phone. But I don't know when we're going to do it. I'm leaning toward Friday at noon, somewhere, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, mm. Depending on, I'll who, have my feet in the pool, and you'd probably have to get us on the phone because we're probably going to be on the road. Yeah, it, it depends on where everybody's playing. But uh, thanks, we won't do one Thursday, that's for sure. Right, right. Uh, uh, of course, I don't think Brian would care if I came out here and sat. So, but they <laughs> will be anybody they, here. No, they will be closed. Guthrie's yeah. will be closed on, on Thanksgiving. Uh, and I think they're closing at 5 o'clock. On, uh, we will close at 5 p.m. on 11-22-23. And that's Wednesday? I think that's Tuesday. I think Thanksgiving is the 24th. No, the twenty second is Wednesday. Twenty second is Wednesday. Twenty third, the twenty third is Thanksgiving. So, so they're going to cl- Guthrie's will close next they Friday. Uh, I mean next we'll Wednesday. Do Wednesday, next Wednesday at five o'clock, and they'll be closed on Thanksgiving Day uh, as well. So, probably going to do a show. Uh, we'll do it on Friday uh, at at some point in time, uh, and I, and I may end up just having to do one from the house. Yeah. You know, do it from the home studio. Yeah, just do there it from the go. home studio and uh, just sit there and uh, let everybody. But uh, you know, next week is Thanksgiving. The schools are out. Uh, uh, kind All of a, week, kind of a crazy week, uh, and people hitting the roads. But uh, there are going to be some football games played uh, here in the county next Friday. Next Friday night, I'm I'm just chalking that one up. Just just yep. hear me out. I guarantee you. Uh, somebody will be playing in Randolph County next Friday night. Widely going all virtual tomorrow, so we won't have any kids at school tomorrow. That's that's right. So they get extra day. They get an extra day. That's right. Wow, an extra. But I'll go extra see. Day. I'll go see Shannon tomorrow morning, and have a chat with him. I'll send that to you as soon as I can. So all three of our teams that are in the playoffs. Tomorrow night, Randolph County will travel to St. James in Montgomery. Airtime for that with Richard Pike and Braxton Daniel at 620. And Kyle and Bailey will have the Wadley Bulldogs as they host the uh, South Lamar Stallions. Pre-game starts at 620, kickoff uh, at uh, 7 o'clock. And then uh, the Hanley gang will be in Tuskegee as Hanley takes on the Eagles of Booker T. Washington. Uh, pre-game for that on NFHS and audio only. Uh, we will have both uh, tomorrow night uh, for you from Tuskegee, and that will be at uh, 6 o'clock airtime, 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, and the Hanley girls basketball team plays in uh, Opelika uh, next week. Uh, so uh, they're getting uh, underway. Coach uh, Courtney Screws uh, and uh, company will be down there a couple of uh, days next week. T- I believe we looked as Tuesday and Wednesday is what I said. Uh, That's right. That and, is uh, what you said. And uh, one's at two and one's at six, and I'll have to put that out there. Could be a good uh, season for those Hanley girls, I'm yes, telling you. Yes. Shout out to Southern Union basketball. Their girls yep. have been winning a lot of games. Five and two. Five yeah, and two. They won last night, so uh, congratulations. Congratulations uh, to them. But, uh, guys, uh, uh, 
as we do enter Thanksgiving week, I, I want to want to say this, uh, and this goes to all the high school sports guys. Last year, I was down and out for the count about this time, uh, and I'm thankful for each one of you uh, and our entire crew. Uh, you guys uh, were my rock, and I'm here. <laughs> A lot to be thankful for. Yeah, yep. that's for sure. And uh, so it, it's uh, everybody. We just hope everybody has a good and safe Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. Mm. I or, may or tag do. along with y'all. Yeah, eat too much if you back. want. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, that's what it's for. Eat too much. Go ahead. If you gotta go to Reform, Alabama next Friday, you might not want to eat too much because you'll be you're gonna be on the road for at least six hours. <laughs> a so long trip. Might not want to eat too <laughs> yeah, much. You gotta I've put been some there once. Into that. Yeah, yeah. Adam's been, there, been once. there once. We won that game. Yep. All right, guys, uh, that's going to do it uh, for us, Tim Altork, Kyle Richardson, uh, and uh, thanks for everybody for uh, watching and listening to the 5-6 uh, football hour here live from Guthrie's. Until next week, stay tuned. We'll post uh, when we're going to do the show uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, we'll do that early in the week, but we uh, do thank you for watching and listening. That's going to do it for us.